So Marvel Snap's newest card is Gilgamesh, and this might end up being one of the biggest five drops in Marvel Snap. I regularly played this for 15, 16, 17 power, which gets it into that, you know, upper echelon. The, the Ronins, the Devil Dinosaurs, some of the Dark Hawks as one of the biggest possible five drops, often even bigger than six drops. You know, you're going to play Gilgameshes that are bigger than your opponent's Red Hulks, which that certainly feels very good. But much like those other big five drops, he does need some help and some synergy to get there. And thankfully, a zoo deck plays perfectly into Gilgamesh's um, game plan because, uh, number one, you get a bunch of buffed cards, ongoing effects like Blue Marvel and Kazar do count. So you lay down a bunch of one drops, you buff them on turn four with Kazar. That gives you the really nice on curve fit on five for Gilgamesh. Alternatively, play the Blue Marvel on five. You can play the Gilgamesh uh, on six with, you know, a remaining one drop that can be perfect. So, you know, getting 10 buffed cards on board to push this to five, 17, sometimes even 11 is possible is not crazy for Gilgamesh. On top of that, even if you don't hit your ongoing cards, this deck does have a few other ways to go green with your numbers. Ant-Man, Nebula, and Nico can all uh, buff themselves in some way uh, and get those green numbers, which is what Gilgamesh cares about. You've also got Mockingbird in here as another tall threat in this deck. So that baseline of wide board power supported by Kazar, Blue Marvel, and your one drops, and then a couple, you know, taller, spikier stat lines to help you, you know, push through the giant stats of your opponent. And, uh, you know, this deck felt solid today i would say but not amazing i don't think gilgamesh is really enough to push zoo to that next level it's always been kind of a middling deck and i would have to say that's about what it felt like today as well i climbed a little but there were also bot games in the mix so i feel like against real opponents i probably went around 50 50 or so depending on your collection level your pocket meta you know gilgamesh might be a nice boost to this sort of archetype, uh, you know, if, if you're reliant on Zoo or this is something you play a lot. But I do not think Gilgamesh felt like the card that pushes Zoo into like pure meta relevance at the top of the meta by any means. I'm not even totally sure I like Gilgamesh better in this deck than something like Sage. He's just kind of expensive and a card like Sage can still get really big for a three cost card while allowing you a little bit more flexibility when it comes to curve. There are also some times where this is just becomes like a 5-9 or a 5-10 because you don't hit your like ongoing support cards. Now that said, imagining Gilgamesh outside of this sort of archetype, I feel like it's even harder to get him to those big stat totals. I was thinking about things like Patriot decks, but that felt like it would have even less buffs than something like this Kazar. You know, you just need to get the bodies down in time and get the ongoing buffs down in time. It's kind of hard to do. And a lot of those decks want big six drops like Ultron and stuff which might make it hard to fit in your Gilgamesh as well. So Zoo seemed like the best fit for Gilgamesh, and he certainly feels good. It feels cohesive. It lines up super well with all the various curves and stuff in this deck, but it didn't really push the power level all that crazy high. So to me right now, I'm kind of middling on Gilgamesh. I'm not sure this looks like the strongest card uh, that said, you know, we'll keep an eye out as, as more deck lists show up, as people refine these sorts of things. There might be ways to improve this, certainly. I'm not pretending this is by any means. The best deck and there might be some other homes too there's things like wong and other ways to buff cards that might make gilgamesh look a little better but i would say my my you know expectations are reserved at best for gilgamesh because this deck which fits him so perfectly still wasn't all that insane although it can still very feel very satisfying to get some very big gilgameshes as you're going to see in this video okay ant man yeah you're fine to go we might we might rip uh shauna with this murder world down just because it's like kind of free maybe uh give it plus two i was gonna play shauna left and destroy those two and just leave the ones out because the case are blue marvel in particular so the nico in that case gets a little bit worse in theory because the shauna is getting destroyed if i go shauna elsewhere it's just like a spacing thing a little bit Maybe that's okay though. Like Shauna Wright's not a disaster, is it? Like we still have space. Mid is the small part in that case is the issue though. So like mid would need a Gilgamesh. Oh boy. Red Hulk is also really nasty. Castle Zemo. Man, that's a problem too. I don't want to give them a 3-4 Shauna for free. Man, am I really? Ugh. Dang it, dude. Now I'm just wasting my Nico effect. It's like, it's fine. We wanted Nico in play, obviously. Uh, cause you know, that makes other things better. Oh, hood. Mid is just gone, dude. I cannot win mid. It's just gone. 
<laughs> I can technically maybe. Um, Chavez is a pretty good roll. I mean, I like the demon too, but oh, Gilgamesh got buffed. Can he go toe to toe with Red Hole commit? Oh man, I doubt it, but we'll try. So it's Kazar, it's Blue Marvel, and then it's Squirrel Girl Gilgamesh, right? Or maybe Demon, actually. We'll have to see how the power shakes out. Yeah. Um, Squirrel Girl, though, lets you get to Castle Zemo better again. Problem is, I'm, like, exposed everywhere. You know what I mean? I'm not just exposed mid. I'm still exposed right. I got problems at every location. They're giving me a Jubilee, which does actually make my Gilgamesh bigger. Because of the blue Marvel, right? Since Blood and Nebula aren't that big. I mean, if they go for just Red Hulk, we're actually totally fine right so this gets another power here which is kind of helpful because sunspot could maybe technically scale gilgamesh scales a ton here he's got one two uh five eight so he's gonna be a, a, a 17 power gilgamesh i think i think i like the squirrel better than the demon for that particular reason because baxter building is pretty important actually i mean the hulk just does not win here right there's just no way <clears throat> I don't even know if it beats the Gilgamesh. Right? That's not even the consideration, right? It's 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 uh, it doesn't beat the Gilgamesh. Number one, oh my God, Gilgamesh, I love you. But number two, it didn't really matter, right? Because even if they went back to building, they're only at seven, and we're at uh, we're at nine. So the squirrel covers pretty well, anyway. Oh my God, dude, Gilgamesh going toe to toe with the Red Hulk is beautiful. <laughs> Get wrecked, Red Hulk. That's nice. Um, so yeah, he gained plus eight. Like we said, he's he's at seventeen after the Chavez, eighteen after the Marvel, uh, kind of fifteen of his own of his own right. But still, that's bigger than this Red Hulk at, at thirteen. Cool, nice, good win. Okay, well, Condon Embassy's chilling me. Yeah, let's do Iceman first. I think Spider Ham's a little better later. Give them time to play their small stuff, kind of. In a weird way, Iceman might hurt that to some extent, but still independently useful. If I don't get a play though, we're still gonna drop the spider ham. Yeah, we just need cards. We need cards in play. Pretty terrible hand right now, right? Just super expensive with no way to discount the Mockingbird. I mean, Blue Marvel Google Mesh is a pair we love, but we need, you know, a Shauna or a Squirrel Girl or something to open up this hand. God forbid we, you know, draw like a Kazar or whatever. Oh, Bast turned off, all right. Blue Marvel on six means Gilgamesh on five, but we need the Blue Marvel to enable it. Usually, Kazar can can help that, but ooh, Sakar could make our life very interesting. Okay, hear me out. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. It's such a good surprise factor. Later's the only thing. Like man, but it's like it could hit off Sakar if I play this. Mirai only goes off before Sakar, so Gilgamesh actually becomes a five ten because three things are buffed. We do have priority, so I miss a kitty pride. I mean, maybe the surprise factor is better. We just, we just won't. We'll just, we'll just won't hit these two cards off Sakar, right? That, that's what we'll do. We'll just, we'll just snipe the blue Marvel or Mockingbird here. Easy game. Easy, easy game. Yes, I told you. We're just so good. When you're talented, you know that's all you need. So, um, is we gonna have priority? No, we have two spots. One, of course. No, not yet. I like Squirrel Girl a lot though. That makes Mockingbird playable. I honestly, Gilgamesh might be good too already. We can go ahead and Shadow King mid pretty soon. Like that kitty part keeps going down there, especially with the Elsa. But I need to lose priority first is the problem. It's like, is the Squirrel Girl gonna allow me to lose priority? Kind of feels like maybe not. I, I don't know. I just keep stacking mid and I'm winning the flanks here. So the Shadow King's gonna keep missing. Also the Shadow King is now useless. <laughs> Screw you, Luke Cage. <laughs> Can Gilgamesh catch up mid? I, you feel like that Kitty Pride's gonna pivot elsewhere, right? That's the thing. It feels like it's gonna move out, and, and maybe you should just go for a Shadow King elsewhere. Just tempo Shadow King into Gilgamesh Ant Man sort of thing. It's like, do I wanna just give up mid though? It's so nasty. The problem is, wherever I play my Mockingbird, they're gonna go away from that with the Kitty Pride, probably. Shadow King actually impacts Blue Marvel and Iceman too, so it's like. He's kind of dead. I don't know, maybe maybe it's just not Ant-Man. Maybe we top deck a one drop next turn. It's kind of a 50-50. Yeah, I, I don't love this, right? Oh, they did go pretty hard here. Maybe, maybe Shadow King right now becomes an interesting line. Hood. 
think the kitty should still go mid, right? Yeah, I think so. Pig and Falcon. Oh god, that makes life basically impossible to determine where the power will be. <laughs> I have no idea, dude. Uh, oh no, Shadow King still doesn't work as Luke Cage is in play, so. Um, I mean, this is a really big Gilgamesh. Unfortunately, we hit the four, not not a one, so can't curve here. Uh, I mean, maybe they just kind of forget left. I think if I'm them, I'm playing a Kitty Pride left, though, and just carry a mid with big stacks. But I don't think Gilgamesh can match the big stacks, right? I think we just always lose. Oh, they don't play left at all. Oh, man, my, rhyme, my line right might have worked. Jeez. Um, oh, they went to the big kitty right. Is Gilgamesh going to carry the stacks? Let's go. He's big enough. He's got to be. That's tiny. Gilgamesh is a monster, dude. Let's go. Oh, yes. The Mockingbird feels ineffectual, but forced the kitty pride. Yeah, man, that's crazy. I might have went kitty left and like demon right. Was demon right enough to match me? Maybe not. Ooh, we got a Gilgamesh. We got a Squirrel Girl and a Kazar. I'm liking the look of this. Do we go Nico to destroy like maybe a spider ham? That could be good. Hitting a Mockingbird would be a dream. Yeah, this is a pretty good Nico option. Uh, so we'll go Squirrel Spider Ham. Kitty Pride is a Shadow King target potentially. Oh, Sanctum Sanctorum, dude, that is my third Sanctum Sanctorum mid game today. Oh, uh, hold up, hold up. Uh, I don't necessarily mind it. It's a little tight for space, which is gonna make the Gilgamesh harder to hit. What was that, Loki? Did I say Loki? Bro. Loki, okay. Jeff for the opponent. Um. Well, Shauna does give me access to the Jeff here. Oh, so does Nocturne. Oh, I love this Nocturne, dude. This gives me so much extra play. Yes. Wow. Shauna was going to get me another card there anyway, which with Kazar almost certainly beats a Jeff, but Nocturne just makes life beautiful. So... Uh, I think we move it now just to start opening up space sooner, kind of seeing what's possible, right? Kazar here. Uh, next turn might be a Shauna. Maybe Shauna mid. And then you finish on Gilgamesh Mockingbird, maybe? I don't know. Actually, we don't necessarily need the Shauna. The, the Mockingbird, I do need it to be one, though. So it's like I need... Or I guess we could just play Mockingbird this turn, too, right? That's actually also totally fine maybe it goes mid since we can't get to hellfire club it's really funny we got hellfire club it's like dude, that's exactly what we didn't want to see um iceman i guess is both nebula and iceman kind of create like you know they're both not the perfect play here but i think we definitely want to gilgamesh i mean iceman's really more likely to be relevant isn't it the nebula just it's not that it's not that interesting this could throw off a, a two card curve on the final turn pretty well. Mockingbird mid. So Gilgamesh is also good at going mid. But we might just give... Nope, not giving mid. I guess it's Gilgamesh, yeah. <laughs> they kind of solved that for us, didn't they? Which means Nebula kind of needs to go right. Uh, oh, that's the wrong order. Oh, it's, it is the wrong order, but I can't help it. Oh, no can't help it i can't literally even play this so yeah it's it's sad because gilgamesh will be one smaller here he won't see the nebula buffed by kazar but um hopefully he's still plenty big i mean we're getting pretty strong right pretty strong mid still ahead left a ton they would need some kind of monster three card development here to win it's like i can imagine them playing three cards as we see but are they gonna be enough to beat all three spots collector's not enough loki's enough to tie but that's all yeah nice Big boy Gilgamesh. Pretty good line for us, dude. That Victory. Nocturne made life very interesting. It probably helped them too to some extent, right? Clearly they needed a lot of space as well, it seems. But the Elsa, I don't know. They could have benefited from two small closed off spots. Ooh, Hell's Kitchen's very good for us, yeah. Uh, next card, plus two. That's a pretty good Nico. I do have the Iceman though, so I have like a little bit of luxury maybe to pull for like a demon or something spicier. 
Black Knight is big and scary. Uh, Shadow King doesn't work against the Ebony Blade, so we're gonna need to match that kind of toe to toe, maybe. Ooh, do we go for the early Shauna. Makes Mockingbird nice. Fills our curve cleanly. Add a copy to hand. That would be decent with Mockingbird, I guess, but the order's all weird. Need to play the Shauna to get the Mockingbird playable in time. Nightcrawler, Ebony Maw, and Agent 13. Okay, so Ebony Maw is kind of bad. I, it's not impossible though, right? Like we still have, you know, Squirrel Girl, for instance. Destroy it and draw two. Oh, and Nightcrawler too, actually, yes. Yeah. So we can honestly already just get here. I'm gonna just go ahead and destroy all these. It's more about uh, drawing the two, I think. I'll have an extra squirrel here. I'm losing the agent 13 though, so the, the and I'm, well, maybe I do this actually. Maybe we want the squirrels alive, so Mockingbird's super cheap. She'll be one in that case though. Squirrel here, squirrel here. Blue Marvel. I mean, it's still, it's better to have her cheap. Things like Gilgamesh, you know, become really interesting in that case. Um, I have a pretty good chance to draw the Gilgamesh too, because I'm destroying the, the squirrel here, so. Maybe a good, good Gilgamesh buff here, potentially. I'm gonna go back to one after 13 dies, remember. Hey, Gilgamesh, nice, okay. I think we need these big numbers to win, right? It's crazy that it's only turn uh, three that turn, by the way. I have like so much stuff down, but it's only turn three, dude. Uh, we don't need we don't need Absorbing Man, right? I, I think we could probably get away with a spider hand. That seems fine. We pretty much know this Nightcrawler is moving mid, don't we? No, no need to show that right away though. Uh, we can save this Ant-Man sort of till the end. It's always gonna be better than Nebula. So it's like Blue Marvel on five, six is, is Gilgamesh Ant-Man. I mean, I guess there's a chance we get Nebula also for the record. This is fine. We'll have space here, two spaces here. So if we move this out or move this here later, for instance, we have Gilgamesh here, Gilgamesh here, Blue Marvel here. Yeah, this is fine. Let's go ahead and get the Ant-Man down. I don't think the priority matters much. Oh, that matters much. Ooh, thank you, Spider-Ham. Let's go, dude. Spider-Ham and Shadow King here existing as like counters of sorts is really cool. Blue Marvel is just much better than Kazar here, right? Because we have the Mockingbird and the Shauna getting buffed, of course. And, and, and Curve anyway, it just doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, this is looking pretty nice. I don't know. I mean, they, 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 they have some scary stuff possible still, of course, but... Length on the Ebony Blade doesn't usually look too great. Like, the, the, the kind of expected upgrade value there is not super high, right? Um, I guess Gilgamesh goes here since that's where they're big. We're ahead mid and getting a little bigger. We're ahead left, getting a little smaller technically. Uh, but ahead right and getting much bigger. This Gilgamesh is freaking gigantic, yeah. Uh, oh, actually, I need to play Nebula first, don't I? Did I play that wrong? Hold up. Nebula being down first makes Gilgamesh bigger since he's an on-reveal. Oh, dude, we don't get to see it! No! <laughs> we are just too efficient. No, how big was he gonna be, though? We could figure it out, right? Nebula's gonna be scaled for Blue Marvel, so 4, 8, 10. He's a 5, 17 here, dude. That is amazing. Maybe Spider-Ham stole the show here, unfortunately, though. Okay, yeah, I don't think we want to wait on the Squirrel Girl on this deck. Just too valuable with various things. Ooh, Shadow King and a Destroy deck might be nice. Tarnax 4. So kind of an iffy play for us, I would say. Like, Shauna, I guess, is pretty good usually, but everything else is kind of risky. Gilgamesh is probably worse, Blue Marvel almost always worse. Fisk Tower, no problem. Mockingbird, pretty risky too. Most five drops are actually smaller than Mockingbird. Some of them have, you know, upsides theoretically, but um, I guess the one drops aren't especially risky because I do just need bodies in Tarnax 4. You know, I need I need stuff there, but Shauna would be my, my go-to if I had it. Kazar would go left or right if we drew it here, which would be a good draw for sure. Carnage is a Shadow King target. Not the world's most exciting, but it's a Shadow King target. Spider Ham and Iceman. Yeah, I guess. We'll just see. Uh, as long as I don't hit double blade, 
will be fine. Like a single blade's okay. I think even an ebony maw would be okay. It's not double blade. <laughs> If we get double blade, I'm done. I'm retiring. It's a good run. But that's incredibly unlikely. No targets, only big things in hand. Yeah, it must be like Arnim, Zola, and Null in hand. Oh, we got Titania. That's kind of bad, too. They have three cards in hand, though. Null, Titania, and what? No, we got double attack! What? I didn't even see the second one. Are you kidding me? So Shadow King Kazar is actually a pretty strong finish, right? Because we can hit maybe a Deadpool, a Venom. This is a big Venom. We might take. Uh, yeah, big Venom. We'll just take the big Venom. We're not going to try to snipe a, a Deadpool or whatever. Um, dude, these Titanias. I mean, the good news is they kind of equalize. Like if, you know, they put up like one card. Well, whatever they put in plays, they, they just equalize, right? So hopefully that's okay. Um, do we ever like Shadow King, uh, Shauna better? I don't think with the Titanias it's worth it. Let's just do this. I think this is fine. Maybe we even play Kazar here, though, because we don't expect them to add power here again, right? I mean, they might be nervous about Ant-Man's the only thing. Like, this does increase my total power output more. But I'm a bit worried about left getting beat. I'm only adding one power left like this, which feels kind of bad. Okay, good. They're just retreating. That makes, that makes life easier. <laughs> Dude, it wasn't double blade. It was the double titania. Man, that is that is something. They could have had a cool play with Venom Titania maybe, but uh, kind of kind of weird. And they had a good one right anyway. Okay, District X. Wow, yeah. Uh, I mean, I like our hand actually for it. It's okay. White Widow is a great draw already. It's a really strong card to get. Uh, Nebula is pretty nice. Honestly, Green Goblin, we're just staying on curve. That's kind of the important thing here. Yeah, I don't hate this at all. Nebula is a fantastic one drop to get. Just really forces their hand in a game where sometimes the power numbers can be pretty close. Do we dump this mid and just like really lock them out mid? I mean, it kind of helps the Widow's Kiss, so probably not. Psylocke, not the strongest, but I can still fit my curve next turn, so. Would be nice to draw a couple big cards, though, for Grand Central. Just make sure I have... Oh, man, we just really... Oh, boy. I mean, they usually play in a Nebula. Yeah, this is... This is a play, I guess. Mantis, please got hit. Oh, God, they didn't play. Oh, God. I mean, I guess the consolation prize is that Nebula is pretty big. Iron Lad into Miss Marvel. That is insane. That's oh oh oh, but it moved. It's less insane. Be a big card, please. Uh, sort of. I mean, honestly, do I just not contest this at all? The problem is left is also pretty hard to win. Like, is Ant Man going to be my biggest card here? But if I draw a six drop, I. <sighs> Uh, I, I don't know, man. This is tough. Well, I can't play a six drop there because of Goose, I guess. Maybe Ant-Man will be my biggest card there. All right, this is going to be tough, Face dude. The, the, the Iron Lad actually gone. supports me pretty well. Like, the Widow's Kiss might just help them. If I draw this Mjolnir, is that good or bad? I honestly don't know. Oh, no, I forgot. They're actually getting the Miss Marvel, too. Good Lord. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe it! No way, dude. No way. Do they just have like a null or something, dude? What the heck? This is crazy. They might have null, dude. This looks like they're running that big deck. The big bads deck. They're just gonna play like null mid, which is pretty sick. Good for them, dude. So this seemed like a low roll, but I bet it's a high roll. They're snapping like null mid's a thing. It might very well be. I wouldn't be stu I wouldn't be stunned which I think is probably bigger than 10, but they had some negative numbers in the mix. So I don't actually know how big the null is, I guess. I guess we can check, right? I think it's a 13 power null. Yeah, I don't know. Have fun. I mean, grats on your cubes if you hit it. I don't care. It's funny. Is it really the null? It's white. It makes me think it's a card out of the District X. Uh, it's, dude, dude, it's a 13, but dude, they're gods, dude. <laughs> I'm not even mad, dude. I'm the one who showed everybody this deck. I deserve to lose to it, right? It's fine. I love this this um, sick variant too, by the way. 
Yeah, we got a Hella from the opponent, which is gonna be a challenge. We do have Spider Ham though. So maybe they got our Nebula, obviously. Maybe Spider Ham can hit it if we time it well. Would probably want to play that on turn five specifically. Uh, we got Kazar Gilgamesh, but no Shauna or Squirrel Girl to set them up quite yet. Uh, could maybe do this as well. Don't expect Shadow King to be great against a Hella deck, so just getting another body down for Kazar into Gilgamesh seems okay. It's actually funny that Kazar only adds one buff here. Ah, uh, but Blue Marvel's nice. So the problem is, right, if I want to play Blue Marvel, I can't play Spider Ham. So no counter to Hella in that case. <gasps> oh, baby, baby, baby. Do we think we can win on numbers? One card discarded so far. I think this is the safer bet in theory because we don't know that the Hella is going to be a thing, you know? Yeah, we'll just try to get there on numbers, I guess. What is this? What is this? Why are they filling this up already? Oh, the blink, sure, that makes sense. Hulk, okay, Hulk's actually not that big. So we know we're going to 18 off Nebula. Spider Ham here adds three, that's 21. Ammon adds four, that's 25. Oh, I do actually have to play Gilgamesh there though. Oh, this doesn't feel good enough, dude. <laughs> low roll so hard mid i mean it's only death right maybe they're just gonna play a big card mid like a hulk or something red hulk um uh, i mean we know gilgamesh carries left so that's not a problem i mean so would mockingbird have carried left too though to be that's the hella right oh it's magneto bro oh that's fine though we don't care about that that's fine gilgamesh carries easy game yeah, Gilgamesh is a monster. Infinite. Oh, thank God we didn't spider him. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. That would have been a disaster. I'm surprised they felt this confident about this because it didn't pull anything left. Okay. Yeah, Nebula early is perfect. Hood. Uh, okay, maybe some Annihilus stuff. Glad they're kind of filling this up already, though. Nebula can compete well. Gilgamesh, but we need some buffs. Scroll Girl's good bodies for a Kazar Blue Marvel for the Gilgamesh. That's good. Don't have to contest Danger Room either, which is nice. Let's go ahead and put the Scroll Girl right here. More, more power away from the Nebula, maybe. Is this Mysterio? Into Sasquatch. Strange Academy. Okay. Ooh. Nico Shauna's really good. Is it worth waiting on the Nico though, right? Like, I don't know. Because you have some good stuff you might want to play next turn, like Kazar. We got Kazar or Mockingbird. I'd probably want to play it. Uh, I'd say let's do this for now. I'm really looking for one of those buff cards to fill in before Gilgamesh is the goal. Uh, Shauna has been hurting me a little bit today. Like, I've had some, some tough rolls on Shauna. I've also had some Echoes that have stolen some games. So, you know, it's a mix, I guess. No Sasquatch for the opponent, maybe they're 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 thinking here. But also be like Patriot stuff, maybe. Like what else we might have? Squirrel Girl, yeah, maybe. Oh, whoa, cool. Okay, maybe it's like a Gilgamesh Patriot destroy everything hybrid deck. Just, just all of it. I mean, I think I'm just gonna Shadow King this before these start scaling, right? And then I can float a little bit for Sunspot. Uh, I want to leave space for Gilgamesh and or, you know, a, a buff guy, so let's chill. Just resetting that Carnage is a pretty big de pretty big debuff right now. It's like, oh, I guess the name of the goes off first, but that's like, so that's much right, yeah. So I really, really, really need a buff guy. Oh, you yeah, can't play him because of Dream Dimension. Are you serious? No, I forgot about Dream Dimension. Well, I mean, Gilgamesh is garbage. Uh, there's no way to get a good Gilgamesh here. I needed the Kazar specifically on this one. Gilgamesh, I mean, it is buffed technically maybe twice. Oh, it's like once. Uh, twice, I guess, with Ant-Man, yeah. 
opponent. Let's see where that Sasquatch rolls, because that changes a lot. Yeah, sadly it rolled left, which means left is kind of unac unaccessible to us. So I, I sort of have to win mid with Gilgamesh, right? Oh, hey, maybe maybe the, maybe the Nico saves us here? They also may decide to not play here, which could make the Nebula better. Or I think that's maybe how it works. Oh, there's also this Nebula too. Hold up. So I have three. I got three already. I think this is going to make four. Might be after though, so maybe it's still only three. I mean, 10 power, you're still pretty good. Maybe this is okay in the scheme of things, right? Maybe this is okay. The Nebula does go off first. Nice. Does Nico go off first? No. This is 11, maybe? Ten? We said 11. Yeah, 11. Nice. <laughs> Easy game. Easy game. Easy game. Did not go to plan. But thankfully, the Sasquatch Victory. gave us some freedom. Because if the Sasquatch had gone here and they had room to play here, we might have had a hard time. Okay, Hala, we're honestly not bad at, but no reason to risk it, really. Let's just get our bodies down and be happy. Iceman we love. Squirrel Girl. Okay, might be a similar idea here. Could be more Patriot, though. That was another angle I thought about for this deck a lot. Ooh, beautiful ear. Okay, let's sit on the Shadow King. We're going to have a pretty good Mockingbird line. So we might have a good turn six with like Mockingbird, Shadow King. I don't know if this deck's going to be something the Shadow King looks at much, though. Villain Ant-Man, dude, how hard do I push left? Because Shauna into Kazar is like a pretty hard push. Dude, I don't know, man. I think we might push it. Like, let's let's go. Armor? Okay, that's fine, I guess, now anyway. It doesn't really matter. Echo, oh, dude, we could have got that armor. So, yeah, the Mockingbird, like we said, doesn't really matter as much anymore. Ebony Mom, mid, though. Ugh. Gross. That's a real pain. Because that's like where we need to add a lot of cards and I just can't. We already had the move, I think, right? So that's gone. Um, I mean, Kazar adds a little power. Blue Marvel adds a little power, but not enough to keep up with the need of Alir's scaling, right? Uh, boy. Copy the hand is really good for Mockingbird, honestly. But I'm just so clogged up elsewhere. This Ebony Moss killing me, dude. I mean, I guess it was better mid than right, but still killing me. Oh, they went in left. What is it going to be, I wonder? Is Mockingbird big enough? Don't be Gilgamesh. Don't be Gilgamesh. Just a little marble. Okay, so I kind of think we're chill there. Oh, the Echo Blindness. Does the Echo Blindness win it for us? Who's bigger, Gilgamesh or Mockingbird? Or actually, is Dinosaur bigger? We have three green cards only, sadly. That's a 10 for Gilgamesh. But 10 plus Ant-Man. How does the Ant-Man work? If I play Ant-Man first, does it count as being... Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh my god, the Echo Blindness steals it. I think the Ant-Man would, would see the staged Gilgamesh and go to five, which would give me four cards, which would push him to 11. These don't count since they're red, we found out. So yeah, that would probably be the play. Okay, yeah, let's go squirrel early, actually. That's fine. Can help us get that Mockingbird down easily. Ooh, that's so vain. Cool, okay. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Kazar does come down on four, so there is some world where playing the ham left is not really a problem, but... Oh, Thanos, dude. Spider-Ham hitting Thanos today is nuts. Westview, sure. Hala. Um, yeah. I don't actually mind if we lose Hala too badly, frankly. Uh, this is pretty good, though... We need a Mockingbird and a Gilgamesh to make this game really exciting. Single Blade is fine. Echo could be big. Echo is big! <laughs> not that it matters, because I'm not destroying their cards anyway. But that's really funny to me. Okay, I don't mind putting the Kazer here, especially with the Blue Marvel, right? We can still splash some, some power. They may decide to go for Hala instead of Asgard. They do not. Okay. 
They also have the Kzar, and it's getting echoed. Again. Yeah, this is not a bot, this portrait and stuff, so... Might be a bit of a boo-boo there, I don't know. That feels like a... Tiny boo-boo. Um, yeah, I mean, Mockingbird mid's probably gonna be the play of this game, but we could get a Gilgamesh. Maybe we wait on this Blue Marvel, because either Gilgamesh Mockingbird or Blue Marvel Mockingbird are both pretty strong plays. I might just, I don't know, left is like not the most secure, so I'm thinking I might need to win mid and, and right, and Gilgamesh is better at that. And he's plenty big already, right? We know we've already got eight buffs for Gilgamesh, thanks to Kazar. I'm gonna chill on this turn just from a spacing standpoint. Like, uh, I don't know. I don't think that gets punished by like goblins or anything here. So like Gilgamesh mid now is looking like pretty interesting if we get it. <sighs> yeah, we don't get the Gilgamesh mid. So it's probably still just Mockingbird mid and Blue Marvel. Gilgamesh mid here would have been certainly much larger than Mockingbird. I would have been able to play Blue Marvel, but I think Mockingbird right would have also covered. It's sad when the, when the new fun card that you're trying to showcase in your video is literally the last card in your deck, by the way. It's really sad. Super scroll, but it gets silenced. Why do they keep doing this? I don't understand. Bro, th 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 this portrait's not supposed to be a bot. Victory. Maybe they thought it wouldn't, but it's just clearly not going card. Dude, I, I, dude I, let me check the bot list. I don't understand. Bots don't typically have portraits like this. There's a list of bot names. Let's see, DT Games. It's not on the bot list, dude. I, I, dude, I, I, dude, I don't know. It's gotta be a third party bot or something then. I don't think you make this mistake two times in a row. I, I don't know. Something's weird going on there.